Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Rick here, and on today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the 10 critical spare parts that I think every Airstreamer should keep on hand. So stay tuned. Hey guys, so recently I had one of my viewers reach out to me and ask me a question about what spare parts do I keep on hand? Uh, he's a fellow Airstreamer, and I think he had just recently watched my video on replacing my water pump in my Airstream. And I had asked in that uh, video, you know, do you keep a spare? And if you don't, you probably should. So, you know, with his inquiry of me of what parts do I keep on hand, I wanted to put together this video and share with you what I think are probably the 10 most critical spare parts that you can keep on hand. So if you've been out on a weekend trip in your Airstream or an extended road trip, or if you're like Lisa and I, if you're a full-time RVer, you've probably come across uh, some instances where you've had something in your rig break or, or just not operate correctly. And that can be very discouraging when you're out on an extended trip or a vacation and now you've got to cut it short because you've got to head home because uh, you don't have the means to repair your rig. And to prevent that, um, and also to, to help save some money from having to call uh, some of these expensive RV repairmen uh, to come out and fix your rig, I just kind of wanted to go over what I think are some of the most critical spare parts that you can keep on hand that I would say probably the average Airstream owner can probably replace and, um, and get your rig back up to 100% operations. So uh, I put together kind of a list here of what I think are those most critical items, and I just want to kind of go over those with you. And I would be very interested in hearing what you think are probably some items that maybe I've left off of this list. Again, this is just what I consider my most critical items, and it may be different for you, but uh, this has just been based off of my experience. So we'll go ahead and get started. So, you know, besides, the obvious most critical spare you could probably keep on hand is your spare tire for your Airstream. If you don't have a spare tire for your Airstream, uh, I would tell you, you absolutely need to have one. And then you also need to check to make sure that it's still serviceable. Uh, I didn't pull mine out. I mean, that was an obvious um, critical spare that I think every Airstreamer should have on hand. Uh, but, uh, you know, that is one, one item that it kind of goes without saying that you need to have those on hand. These next 10 items that I've identified are probably things that maybe you haven't considered or really thought about. And I just wanted to kind of go over those. Not in any real particular order, but I will just kind of share with you the ones that I've already used uh, during my time as a full-time Airstreamer. And some that, knock on wood, I haven't had to use, but I do keep them on hand just in case. And I really group these down as far as critical, meaning it's going to prevent me from being able to utilize the Airstream. I'm not either going to be able to get heat or water. I'm not going to be able to get sewage out. I'm not going to be able to cool the air conditioner down. Um, I'm going to have to repair some type of a leak or something to that effect. So that's, that's what I consider critical. Certain things like cabinet latches, um, I keep spares of those, but I don't consider those to be critical. Um, if a latch breaks, that's not going to stop me from being able to complete my vacation, my camping trip, or until I can get that spare part ordered and on hand. Um, so with that said, the first item that I have that I consider a critical spare is one that I've actually had to replace here this last summer, and that is the capacitor for my air conditioning unit. I have a 30 amp Airstream, uh, so I only have one uh, AC unit on the roof. Well, as you would know, this July, my air conditioner broke down while we were on our way up to Maine to, to attend the international rally. I tried calling around trying to find this part. Unfortunately, I did not have a spare at that time. I was able to acquire a, a, a part when I went to a, a national RV chain, and they just happened to have a, an old Dometic uh, air conditioner sitting out back that they had just replaced off of somebody else's camper, and I asked him if I could look at it to see if it had the part that I needed. Sure enough, it was the exact part I needed, uh, so I was able to salvage that capacitor off of their air conditioner and get my air conditioner up and running. Ever since then, 
as soon as these came in stock, I went ahead and ordered one. So I keep one on hand now just for those emergency situations because this is probably one of the most common parts on your air conditioner uh, that's going to go bad and go out. Um, so again, that's the first item that I've identified as a critical uh, part for my Airstream uh, because in the summertime, you definitely want to have air conditioning uh, operational. So the next thing that I have on my list here um, is a water heater igniter board. And if you're not familiar with this, this is kind of the electronic control module that you would use on your water heater uh, that would uh, help it ignite and, and heat up uh, water uh, for your rig. This one here is manufactured by uh, Dinosaur Electronics. It is the UIB64 um, igniter board. It, it can work in both your, um, uh, in your water heater as well as it can be configured and used in some models of your furnace. Uh, and I believe maybe even on some of the refrigerators. Don't, don't quote me on that. But uh, this is a part, I think it's about $130, small little electronic part that um, you know, is good to have on hand. Whether or not you would know how to replace it or feel comfortable replacing it, I think it's still good to have it on hand in case you did have to call a repairman out and he didn't have a the appropriate part. So uh, you may not be able to put it on yourself, but you would at least have the part on hand that a technician could install if you needed to. Uh, the next thing that I have on hand that I keep as a critical spare is a water pump. This one here is a SureFlow uh, water pump for my model of Airstream. And if you haven't already watched my previous video where I replaced this, very simple task, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. It probably took me an hour to do it because I was filming at the same time. But if I weren't filming, this is literally probably a 15 minute task uh, to replace. Uh, these go out pretty common, uh, pretty frequently, um, about $60. You can order these through Amazon. But again, uh, if you're out camping and you don't have a water pump, um, you're, you're restricted to then just using city water and it, that may not be uh, the type of camping uh, that you want to do. Um, moving on, so to number four I think is where we're at now. I keep a spare 30 amp power cable on hand. Um, if you know, you know, it's not uncommon when you go to some of these RV parks that uh, their power source isn't necessarily uh, optimal for your rigs. They, they, you get some voltage fluctuations and if you're not careful, you can end up burning up one of these cables. Or unfortunately, not happened to me, but I've heard of people forgetting to uh, disconnect their cable and then they try to drive off and then they rip the head off or something else. Um, so, you know, not, not too big, not too expensive, uh, but I keep a spare 30 amp power cord on hand as well. So moving on, kind of staying in that vein of electronics, um, something else I keep on hand, critical spare parts, is an assortment of blade uh, fuses, as well as I have some of the other I don't know what they call those, the, the little glass vial ones um, that I keep on hand as well for some of the other electronics. But for sure, definitely keep assorted uh, blade fuses. Uh, you may have to replace some of those on your circuit board or, or on your uh, electrical panel in your rig if for some reason you had uh, uh, an electrical problem. And this is a very inexpensive way of keeping your rig running. Uh, next thing I also keep on hand is just an assortment of hitch pins and coupler um, latches. You would not believe how easy it is. So on my, on my um, weight distribution bars, they use these special types of pins. I don't know if you can see that very well. Uh, so I keep some of those on hand. You never know, you may lose one. You may have one break. The coupler, of course, I, I use some of these. I keep some of these on hand um, as well as some additional pins that are here that I keep on hand. Again, when you're getting ready to hitch up, if you don't have some of these very specialty hitch pins, you're not going anywhere. You're not gonna be able to hook up your rig, you're not gonna be able to tow, um, and that can be a very big safety hazard uh, if you attempt that without the appropriate 
um, pins and or uh, uh, latches uh, in place. So again, keep some of those spares on hand. Uh, again, you can pick those up at Tractor Supply or Walmart or some of these other automotive stores and, and so forth. The next thing that I keep on hand that I keep, think is a critical spare, and this one could be debatable, uh, because it is a pretty common item that you can run down to a store and pick up. But if you're out camping somewhere remotely, the last thing you want to do is have to drive, you know, into town and try to find something. Stores may be closed. Um, but that is, I keep a spare water hose on hand. This is a 25-foot uh, zero-G hose. Uh, I have the other one that I use on a regular basis. But I keep a spare on hand in case that one were to get damaged or get cut or severed. Or I keep another 25 foot on hand uh, just so I can, if I needed to, extend my water hose uh, to reach the hydrant. In addition to this, and I think I've got them in here sitting here. Oh, there they are. Um, in addition to just a spare water hose, few spare washers. Uh, these come in handy. I replace these on a pretty regular basis as well. Um, you know, they're, pick these up at Walmart or any, any hardware store for a few dollars. A quick way to, to keep your hose from leaking and uh, keep everything working in top knot shape. Next thing that I, I keep on hand, uh, again, kind of keeping in line with um, the infrastructure or the, um, oh, that infrastructure is not the right term but the, um, the systems of the rig, you know, that's either electric, water, sewer, and so forth. I keep a spare or two spare um, water heater plugs. Uh, these are only a couple bucks, again, from Amazon. Uh, these are handy to keep on, uh, um, you know, real easy, easy, small to store. Um, I had to replace mine not too long ago. You can also see a video that I created on that. Again, that's a five minute job uh, taking out the old one. I do recommend that you stick with the Atwood um, heater plugs. They're a little bit better quality, uh, kind of a, a PVC harder plastic than the knockoff uh, kind of um, softer plastic. I think maybe these are nylon. The Atwood ones I think are a nylon and these other ones here, these knockoff ones. Now I'd use this in an emergency, but it'd be, you know, after I, I replaced it with this one here. So I think we're now down to number nine, which is, I'll put my gloves on for this one here. And you probably already have an idea of what I'm going to talk to you about. And that would be keeping a spare sewer hose on hand. Um, I do have my regular sewer hose that I use, but I also keep a spare on hand. Again, you never know when that primary hose is gonna get damaged, crack, start leaking, and uh, you need to have a way of being able to empty out your black and gray tanks. So I, this one's a relatively small one. I do have an extension as well that I keep on hand, uh, but for a few bucks, Again, peace of mind if you're out camping and you have to empty your tanks, you always want to have a, a, a spare uh, black hose or um, sewer hose on hand. I guess uh, you could go and ask your neighbor if you could borrow theirs. They may look at you a little funny, kind of wondering what you're doing out camping. Um, but uh, again, something that you can pick up, keep on hand, relatively easy, and again, a, a bit of peace of mind. And then the last thing, number 10, on my list of critical spares that I keep on hand, and again, this is something that I've used, unfortunately, quite frequently, and uh, you may think, well, this isn't really a spare part, but I would argue differently, um, but it's a, a, a couple tubes of Dicor lap sealant. Um, I've had uh, a leak in my roof, and uh, I used probably three, four tubes of this as I was trying to track down where that leak was coming from. Ultimately, I ended up finding it. Uh, you can see my other video I have on that uh, when I had to replace uh, some of the black and gray tank vents on my Airstream. And then I used some of this Dicor lap sealant uh, to get a good seal around that. Every Airstream leaks. It's just a matter of time. If you don't take care of that roof, you're gonna have a leak. And uh, again, I would strongly recommend that you keep a product such as Dicor lap sealant on hand. It can definitely help uh, save your camper from s significant water damage as well as, again, 
uh, allow you to go ahead and make some of those repairs on your own without having to call in an uh, RV technician. I think I've covered everything, but I do have one bonus uh, tip. Now, uh, this one here is something that is, again, debatable on whether or not you would consider it a critical spare part to keep on hand. But uh, this is something also that I have used pretty frequently, and that is my rivet gun and some assorted rivets. Now, when I say assorted rivets, the most common rivets that I've had to replace are just some of the small ones that are on the interior that vibrate loose or shear off when you're traveling down the road. But I have had to use some of these other rivets, external rivets, uh, when I had to replace the, um, or repair the deadbolt on my door. Uh, again, I can link that video uh, down in the description below if you're interested in looking at that. But again, I damaged the deadbolt on my Airstream. I had no way of locking it. Um, and without having some of the rivets, I would not have been able to complete the repairs. So again, that's just a bonus tip. That's probably number 11 on the list. But uh, if you don't have uh, a rivet gun and some assorted rivets and you're an Airstream owner, would highly recommend that you do so. So guys, so I think that's gonna pretty much wrap up today's video. Um, again, this is probably not an all-inclusive list of what are considered the 10 most critical um, spare parts to keep on hand, but I would really love to hear from you and tell me what you think I'm probably missing off of this list, or if you have any questions about um, these spare parts and how I've used them, or which ones I have used, or which ones I haven't used. Uh, I think I've probably used at least 75% of these uh, during our time as full-time travelers in our Airstream. So again, thanks for watching. If you haven't already done so, please consider subscribing to our channel. It really helps us out. Um, also drop us a line down in the comments below. And um, hopefully you will never need to use any of these, but if you do, hopefully this has been helpful for you and uh, we'll see you down the road. So take care.